Well, thank you, thank you for the invitation uh, this evening, um, and it's a pleasure to come and speak to you about uh, the IAPP. Um, just hands up, has anyone ever heard of the IAPP? We have a few people in the house. Excellent, very good. Well, the IAPP is the International Association of Privacy Professionals. Um, so how do I do this? I just go down, scroll down. Yeah. Okay. So the IAPP is has bas was basically founded in 2000, so it's a relatively young organization. We're 15 years old, obviously, um, and we are the largest privacy association currently in the world. Um, as such, we are the only large non-for-profit leader in the privacy industry. So out there, you have a number of uh, platforms which are uh, for profit, but we are the, the largest uh, non-for-profit. Uh, we currently actually have close to 24,000 members in 84 countries. Um, and about 15% of our membership is European. Um, why was the, why was the um, association created? Essentially, a couple of companies got together back in 2000, um, had been speaking with a number of uh, privacy professionals about building a platform to basically build IP around uh, the privacy profession and about, around content with regards to privacy law. Um, one of the key organizations uh, was Microsoft. Microsoft gave us our first grant to build up our first certification program. So we do have a number of uh, members that obviously come from very large organizations. Uh, we do have corporate membership as well. So um, this is the number of individual members, but they can be attached to corporate programs. So we have, we have a lot of corporate membership as well. We're also, uh, as an organization, we're independent. Um, and by that I mean we're not a lobbyist. We take no position on policy. Uh, we will not uh, necessarily advise governments on what they should do with uh, privacy policy, although we've been asked to. Um, so we really are a rather big tent. We, we call ourselves agnostic in that sense. And we bring together industry, regulators, government, data scientists, um, anyone who's working in and around data and who wants to share and look at innovation of, of how to manage and control data. That's really what the IPP is all about. So as a, as a profession, obviously we really didn't exist 20 years ago. The privacy professional is really a profession in growth. Um, and as previously mentioned, obviously also by Christoph and also by um, and, and yeah. Um, it touches upon multiple data points across different functions within companies. Um, and there is a significant privacy, we see there's a, there's a significant privacy gap in organizations. So it's really a, a profession in birth, uh, still in its baby teething stages, and it, it's, it's starting to mature and it's starting to explode as we speak. Um, to give you an idea, um, it took us 12 years to hit our first 10,000 members. It took us three years to reach the next 13,000 members. So that gives you an idea of, of how the profession is growing. Um, and obviously, you know, we, we do a lot of uh, salary uh, index uh, surveys uh, with our membership as well. And what we've noticed uh, from, our, uh, from our 2014 one is that when people have IAPP certification, which is one of our core products, suddenly their salary increases as well. So there is definitely a an increasing acknowledgement of the profession and, and, and by getting you know ac academic qualifications and professional certifications in the area of, of privacy it helps support obviously your career um, which is obviously one of our key one of our key mission statements is to help privacy professionals grow within their career as well What are the opportunities for our members? Obviously, it's education, networking, and certification. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we do uh, to support those, uh, support those uh, ideas. Um, one of the key things that we do provide to our, our members and obviously to our non-members is also our publications. So we have a number of online newsletters uh, and blogs. Um, we have on the right-hand side, you can see we, we do certain digests in different areas, so we have weekly uh, newsletters that go out to our subscription base, um, focusing on developments in Canadian privacy law. Uh, uh, we have a European one, 
uh, we have an Asia Pacific one, and we have one that's dedicated to tech. Um, to give an example, obviously, because we're in Europe, the European Data Protection Digest has a subscription base of about 8,500. Uh, we don't have 8,500 members in Europe, so I mean, it's, it's actually open to the public, so you can sign up for that, they're free. Um, we have a number of other uh, ones which are, the Privacy Perspectives is free, it's, it's a thought leadership blog which is on our website, um, and it's contributed to by, by people working in and around privacy, and it's quite well received. Our Privacy Advisor is a very in-depth analysis of issues that uh, are taking place within privacy, and that's a member only one, as well as our privacy tracker. And our daily dashboard is a daily uh, newsletter that goes out every day with the global news of what's happening in privacy. So this is also to, to keep our, our member communities uh, abreast of what's happening in the world. Because obviously, if you, as you know, as you work in business, you know, it's, it's global. Business is global now. It's not just about working in Belgium or working in Europe or working in... Uh, multiple regions. It's, it's a very, very global, uh, global concept. We have online community as well, um, because obviously, um, you know, people can't necessarily go to our face-to-face -face meetings. We, we do have knowledge nets, um, so understand knowledge nets to be chapters. Um, so we have chapters that are based around cities. So we have a Brussels chapter, we have a London chapter, we have Paris chapters, we have chapters in Spain, in Barcelona, Madrid, uh, we have Milan, we have uh, Dublin, um, so a lot of the major cities, Amsterdam and so forth, so a lot of our local communities are built around our local chapter events and they will hold a number of meetings and events and social gatherings throughout the year to bring the community together to discuss um, the issues that they're faced with and the obstacles and what's happening within, within the whole area of privacy. Um, for those who can't obviously attend uh, those meetings, uh, we also have a lot of online community um, tools. Uh, so we have privacy lists, um, we have a lot of web conferencing, blogs on the websites, uh, social buzz is obviously in reference to our social media, so we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter and so forth. So we have a lot of uh, communication tools at uh, the disposal of, of members. Um, one of our biggest attractions is obviously our resource center and um, that's an online uh, benefit, and that's only for members. Uh, but we have uh, a lot of um, content in there that assists uh, privacy professionals in their career and in their day-to-day -day jobs. Everything from you know samples and samples, tools, and templates on privacy impact assessments or or BCRs or what have you. So it, it's quite it's quite complete, um, and it's it's very well received by our membership and probably one of our key uh, value propositions to our members. So connecting, connecting the industry, we do a number of events every year. Um, they all have their own individual icon for branding purposes, obviously. Um, our largest event is our Global Privacy Summit. That takes place in Washington, D.C. It's every April. Um, we had this year 3,300 people attend from all over the world. Um, so it's uh, our biggest event. Uh, our IAPP Europe Data Protection Congress takes place in Brussels. Um, it takes place in the first week of December. Last year we had 1,000 people attend that. We reckon this year we will have about 1,300. And frankly, if it gets any bigger, there's nowhere in Brussels that can hold that type of event. We'll have to move to, I think, Amsterdam. Somewhere. Of <laughs> yeah, to the high. <laughs> <coughs> well, I mean, we don't really have, you know, massive uh, event facilities in Brussels. So, uh, Aisle's too far, too far. It's too far from Brussels center for a lot of people. Sorry? <laughs> but there you go, we have, we have a number of different other uh, events. So the other big one that we have in Europe is our uh, Europe Data Protec Protection Intensive that's uh, held in London that attracts about 400, 500 people per annum. Um, and of course, around all of our events, we run uh, a lot of workshops as well, practical workshops on how to tackle privacy issues in companies. So it'll be you know, PIA assessment workshops uh, and the like, uh, BCRs. Uh, and we also run a lot of trainings and certifications in conjunction with our, with our congresses. So. so that's the thing that's uh, really our flagship product. It's our certification. So our Certified Information Privacy Professional Certification Program. Um, 
We basically have a series of designations. So our CIPP, uh, we have one for Europe, we have one for the United States, and we have one for government relations, which, which is predominantly US focused, uh, but we will probably be developing another one uh, with, re with regards to EU government affairs. Um, our CIPPM is the application of the theory, which is predominantly what you learn in the first designation. Um, and then we have a very specific one, which is uh, obviously aimed at digital companies, aimed at the, the big uh, tech players, and that's the CIPT. Um, so you can see uh, our certification is, is, is obviously very well received. We're actually undergoing ISO certification at the moment, um, which we hope to have uh, at the end of June, beginning of July, which we think gives it a lot of, uh, a lot of cachet. Um, currently, we have a, anywhere between six and 7,000 uh, certifications, uh, certified uh, professionals. Um, to get, and, and obviously, the demand for the certification is increasing dramatically. Um, to give an example, hold on, let me come to you afterwards. To give an, yeah. Just some figures for Belgium. Where are we in Belgium in terms of uh, CIPT certified people? How many we have in Belgium? Yes. I don't have them off the top of my head. Um, I would say about 50. 50? Possibly 50, yeah. I think it's quite popular in Belgium. We have uh, quite, a, quite a number of our Belgian members uh, who have the, the tech uh, certification. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, you know, there is increasing demand for the, for the certification program. So in June, no, sorry, in May, we had 895 registrations for the certification program. This is global figures. Um, and so far this month, we've had 1,800, which is a record. We've never had 1,800 in a month. So that's pretty impressive to have 1,800 registrations. But I'm assuming a lot of this is perhaps linked to the fact that the uh, GDPR is, is reaching its zenith and uh, will start appearing. So clearly, this is you know, one of our core products. Um, if you actually look at the GDPR, um, if you look at the council text, and there is there's a number of caveats in there where they, just, where they make reference to Certification. It's very center stage within the within the council text. They talk about organizations um, where where they should be looking to implement uh, certification mechanisms to safeguard uh, the organizations. So it's it is something that uh, we see as a is a, is one of our strong strong suits, uh, for lack of a better term, um, and we do get a, an awful lot of information requests on our certification programs. So we, we do see this as a, as a growing area for us. Our education is obviously our core product. We, we run trainings, face-to-face -face trainings uh, to prepare for the uh, for certification. We also do online trainings, um, and we also publish a lot of uh, textbooks uh, to prepare for, uh, well, just talking about regulations in general. Um, but obviously, they're, they're a very good, uh, a significant part of our, um, of our coursework uh, to prepare for the exams. Uh, we also have uh, the Western Research Center, so um, this is maybe of more interest to, to yourselves as data scientists. Um, so we do um, have a center which is all about encouraging research uh, into privacy, into data protection, into big data and the like. Um, and it's uh, something that is um, also gaining a stature um, and uh, we fund that obviously through our own through our own means and also through grants uh, received uh, from different governments. So it's, it's something that we feel is supporting our efforts uh, to build um, curricula and to build content in the privacy arena for, for, our, uh, for our members. And finally, just to uh, uh, speak to our global alliances, obviously we, uh, we do try to work with national associations as well. So in France, you have the IFCDP, uh, the, the GDD in Germany, uh, to name two. I mean, obviously, these are sizable markets uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, privacy, professional potentials. Um, and obviously, as you probably know, it's mandatory in Germany to have uh, DPOs uh, in companies above a certain uh, size. Um, so we try to work with, uh, these, with multiple organizations to, to promote the profession, to promote privacy as a, as a, as a profession. Um, we ha actually do have a IAPP organization in Australia and New Zealand, but it's not part of 
us. It's been licensed out um, many, many years ago, um, but we work closely with them. So that's really it. I mean, just in summary, I guess, you know, what we're trying to do now here in Europe is, is prepare for the, uh, what we feel will be a significant demand um, for more privacy education and uh, certification going forward. Um, obviously, we, you know, we provide the platform bringing together uh, industry, governments, um, agencies, supervisory agencies and, and the like to discuss areas of privacy, to, to bring innovation to the areas of privacy and discuss you know, what are the challenges faced by, by industry and faced by governments. So it's, it's really a gathering of minds. I mean, that's really what we try to do. Um, and we feel that obviously uh, with uh, the recent opening of an office here in Europe, we've opened our office uh, four months ago, and we're sending a message to the market that we're here to stay. Um, as a global organization, we're headquartered in the United States. As with most uh, international associations, they typically start in the United States. Association world is, is much more mature in the US than it is in Europe. Um, but we are an international organization. We, we do work across the globe. Um, and of course now with the, with the increasing demand for, for all things privacy in Europe, uh, we have opened an office here to make sure that we cater to that. So that's it really. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Well, I mean, if you, if you look at the certification, for example, um, that is something that's really geared towards data protection officers. So you'll find anyone who's working as legal counsel in companies uh, looking for that accreditation. Um, but we do provide a lot of content for people who are not necessarily at that sort of C-suite level, if you like. Um, but we, we, you know, we, we expand all vertical markets because obviously we, we're not specific to a given. Well, apart from the tech certification, we don't have a certification in healthcare. So healthcare, to your point there, is our third largest vertical market in terms of membership. But I will say this, about 35% of our members will have a legal background. Yeah, they'll have a legal background. So it'll be legal counsels to companies, it'll be law firms. We have some significant programs with uh, sizable law firms where we train up all their lawyers in privacy areas. Um, Baker McKenzie, Hunton Williams, uh, Covington, so we, a lot of the big international law firms will look to us for, for certification and for training. Uh, but we also have a you know, sizable practitioner market as well. Um, what, about, what about sales and marketing professionals? That we're, seeing more, yeah, we're seeing more marketing people coming on board now. Um, you know, I, think the, I think there is a broader consensus uh, within organizations that privacy is not just touching upon regulation and compliance, it's, it's, as we heard in previous uh, presentations, it's really going down into the organization. There's, there is an increasing demand from industry for training of rank and file. Now, if you, want, if you want to do rank and file training, you're not necessarily going to certify them. So we are starting to look at developing you know, a privacy core product uh, series where we can train people in industry who are not looking for certification. Because we are seeing an increasing demand from our members, also from our corporate members. Uh, to provide uh, a level of training that is not as highly sophisticated as, as say, the uh, certification programs that we run, but more speaking to the actual hands-on practical management of data on a daily basis. So we're seeing a, we're seeing a convergence now of, uh, of you know, what was previously seen as a, as a legal mindset, we're seeing the technical aspects merge in with the legal more and more. And also with info, you know, information security. Cyber security, these are all trending areas. That, all these areas are starting to overlap now. I mean, basically, anything that's digital is touching upon privacy, right? It's touching upon aspects of uh, cyber, cyber security, infosec. Um, and there is, a, you know, where in the past, um, you know, IT, you know, people would look at data as an IT security issue. Now there's a, a, a global acceptance that we need privacy in that uh, format now. So, you're seeing a, a greater emergence of, uh, of the, the privacy aspects with the security aspects. And that speaks also to privacy by design as well. So we're seeing a lot of that as well.